Hello, thanks for checking out my video. Today we're going to be using these uh, shapes worksheets to trace and cut out the shapes and then we are going to take our cutouts and we're going to use our second piece of paper here with a picture on it to then match the shapes that we cut out onto our second piece of paper to construct a an object here. So in this case, this is a truck. Um, in our next worksheet, we have a rocket ship. And in our third worksheet, we have a train. So we will be using our visual motor integration skills and some great fine motor skills as we trace along and cut out our shapes. And then we'll be developing some spatial orientation skills, um, some sequencing skills, and some great visual perception skills as we then match the shapes to construct our object. And as usual, I have my sheet protector, this little plastic slip here that I can put my papers into and then use a dry erase marker to trace over it, which will then just be, it will be able to wipe right off. So if we don't want to jump straight into paper and pencil and making permanent marks on our worksheet, we can practice by slipping it into our sheet protector, and then we can just use it as many times as we'd like as we practice our tracing and develop some of our visual motor integration skills. So if I slip that in there, and I can get the rest of this worksheet pile out of the way, and I can work exclusively on this one, and I can maybe keep this picture up here as a reference to what I will be doing. And I can go about using my worksheet inside my sheet protector with a dry erase marker to practice my tracing skills before I move on to a permanent uh, mark on my paper. While you're using your sheet protector, uh, it would be a good time to start incorporating some um, some other visual cues. We can use kind of like a large dot on each point where we are connecting, or just one large dot here on the circle, or maybe one on the bottom. Maybe you can just kind of make up your own pattern of, of how many visual cues you like to use. Maybe you don't want to use any visual cues except for the ones on the paper. That's fine. Uh, we have two different color circles, so we can practice the circles twice, but we still have some um, good visual discrimination skills that we'll be using when we match. So we'll have to match the purple to the purple and the green to the green. And that will um, be really, really good for kind of some color identification. Um, but really, what we're looking to develop here is the visual motor integration, some fine motor skills with the tracing and the cutting, and then also the matching component. We'll be working on our spatial orientation and sequencing abilities. If you are looking for a tactile cue, we can always use Play-Doh and put a couple little Play-Doh chunks out there. Maybe just one on each corner of the square um, that kind of thing there, or any, any point that we want to really maybe highlight where we're starting. So I can put it over here with the circle, and I can put it here with the square. So for this one, maybe I'll put it on the outside so that we can see the corner. And I'll go ahead and just do this for the next two points here as well. And then once I'm done with that, I'll have maybe a little bit of a tactile cue. It's not, it's not a big tactile cue, but it's a visual cue and a tactile cue, letting me know that this is where I am to start my mark. So I don't really want to move my Play-Doh out of the way. I just want to keep it there, unless it's in the way. Then we're going to move it out. I'm going to move over here to the side. 
following along our dotted line. Again, we don't really want to move our Play-Doh too far out of the way, so we're going to keep it nearby. And we will know if we are going outside of our margin if the Play-Doh really moves really far away. So another thing we can do here is just connect the dots of the Play-Doh. Connect the dots of the Play-Doh, making a little boundary on the outside. Again, this is just a tactile cue, a little bit of a visual cue to help us out as we practice our worksheet before we get into the uh, permanent markings. So now that I've got a little practice, I think I'd like to pull my worksheet out of my sheet protector and begin tracing and cutting. So I pulled my worksheet out of my sheet protector and I am ready to start tracing these shapes. So I can move this other worksheet out of the way. So we're clearing out our visual field a little bit. And then I can use something like a highlighter to act as our visual cue, which I think I'm going to do for the circle. That's our starting and stopping point, as well as these um, square, the square and the triangle. I'm just going to go ahead and use a visual cue for all of these because I think that's what, just what I'm, I'm going to practice for this worksheet. And then when I'm done with that, I can use a different color marker or crayon or pencil, whatever you're choosing to then go ahead and trace around my shapes. And I really want to focus on stabilizing the paper with my non-dominant hand. If I start moving the paper with my dominant hand as I trace, we're really not able to be uh, that effective. But again, we also don't want to have our hand hovering. So how do, we, how do we fix this? We want to make sure our hand is stabilized on the table, but we also don't want to move this paper around. So we have to use our non-dominant hand stabilize the paper, stabilize our forearm with our dominant hand here with the table, and then we're just going to go ahead and start tracing around the shapes. You could use a grasp with extended fingers or maybe a lateral tripod grasp or a dynamic tripod grasp. Any of those are, are just fine. The, the more we work towards this dynamic tripod grass, the more fine motor skills we'll use. So I'm going to use that because I want to practice my fine motor skills. And I'm just going to continue to trace along the boundary here, right along my visual cue. And then I will do it for my triangle as well. And then for the circle. And then lastly, for this large rectangle. So we're getting a lot of good practice here, tracing along horizontal lines and vertical lines. And then we will work on our scissor skills as we go to cut out these shapes. So I'm ready to begin cutting. Uh, this is not the most um, spaced out um, worksheet here. So I might want to separate my shapes into kind of individual pieces of paper here. That'll give me a smaller uh, work area. So I will really be encouraged to use um, my scissors with a little bit more precision. So, you know, if we have a larger piece of paper and a small shape, we might be more inclined just to kind of trim around it here. But if we have a smaller space and a small shape, we might be more inclined to offer a little bit more visual attention to our target. And then we can go ahead and cut out with a little bit more precision as well. So I'm going to pre-cut these shapes. If your student needs assistance cutting out these smaller shapes, um, it would be a, a good idea to maybe provide a little hand over hand assistance so that we aren't um, you know, allowing our students to cut themselves, or if your student is not demonstrating enough visual attention to the task, we may want to postpone this cutting part and just cut out the shapes for them. Um, we are always thinking about safety first. So if that, if that accurately describes your student, 
um, with maybe a lack of visual attention or difficulty maintaining focus, um, visual attention, we want to go ahead and just cut out these shapes for them. So I'm focusing on using my scissors with the correct orientation. I've initiated a grasp correctly and I'm using my non-dominant hand to really be the um, be the pilot here. I'm gonna go ahead and just use my my dominant hand here with the scissors just to cut almost in just a straight vertical line every time because I'm going to use my non-dominant hand to turn the paper. This will get a little bit more complicated when we get to smaller shapes like these circles but for this large rectangle here we can pretty much just do a small vertical cut, turn the paper, do a longer vertical cut turn the paper and then do the smaller vertical cut again. So we don't really have to turn our scissor hand over and do a horizontal cut. We're just gonna turn our shape with our non-dominant hand and focus on these vertical cuts here along this line. Now that I'm done with that, I can go ahead and finish up the rest of these. Now that I'm done cutting out my shapes, I can clean up my area a little bit and make sure that my visual field is clear from all the clutter. And then I'm going to introduce my corresponding worksheet and we will go ahead and match the shapes. We can keep this within our um, kind of our vertical visual field here we can just line up the shapes directly with this worksheet and start matching or we can put the worksheet to one side or the other to start developing some uh, horizontal visual pursuits so if we're working on vertical visual pursuits we would put the worksheet on top and our shapes on the bottom maybe even spread out our visual field a little bit here on the bottom so we have to scan and then visually discriminate between what shape we need. Or we can just kind of keep it in nice and close, keep our visual attention right here in the center and match our shapes that way. But I think for today, for me, I'd like to work on my scanning and some horizontal pursuits. So I'm gonna use my worksheet on my left side and I'm going to put the shapes on my right side and then I will begin to match the shapes and construct our object. So it's a pretty simple activity here we're just gonna go ahead and take this shape we are going to match it over here uh, we can talk about the shape this is a blue rectangle and then we're gonna to, going to get another shape we're getting some good fine motor skills here, but really we're working on the visual pursuit component of it now. And then as I place my shape onto the, the corresponding worksheet, I want to make sure that I am actually orienting my shape correctly so that I'm not just matching it. I'm actually using it now with some good spatial orientation skills to match the shape correctly, the proper orientation, and then I'm going to get into these circles here, match those. And when you're done, we will have a truck. And if you want to go ahead and take this um, to the next level of, of skills here, or if you just want to continue working on some of your fine motor skills or maybe a little grip and pinch strength, you can go ahead and glue these shapes onto the corresponding worksheet here. So you would use your glue and develop some good grip and pinch strength. Or maybe you're gonna use a glue stick and continue working on our uh, manual dexterity here, our radial precision as we are using our fine motor skills a little bit more with this object here. So for me, I think I'm going to use the glue stick. I'll have a little bit more precision with what I'm doing and I'm going to go ahead and glue these shapes onto my worksheet. Now that I'm done gluing my shapes onto my worksheet, I can go ahead and use this worksheet for 
some writing purposes. If, if I'm working on a writing goal, now is a good time to maybe identify the object and to uh, practice, practice writing. So you can, you know, practice writing one word, truck, or you can go and label all of the shapes if you were uh, if you're demonstrating some more advanced writing skills or you're working on your your kind of sentence formation you have the full spectrum of writing abilities now with just this little worksheet here so for me I'm just gonna stick to one word I'm gonna use uh, truck in my description here and as uh, the educator or parent whoever's working with the child here we want to go ahead and maybe give them some dotted lines to trace. That's okay. That'd be all right with me. So I'm going to use all uppercase letters. Um, that's what we're kind of working with here initially is the uppercase before we get into the lowercase. And once I'm done with that, I can use a crayon or a different color marker if I was inclined to do so and have your student trace these these letters here to make the word so for me I'm gonna just stick with my black marker here and trace along these dotted lines we really do want to focus on how we're forming our letters um, so it's not just me connecting dots there's actually some process to this letter formation so I generally want to start on the top um, often the letters will kind of you know start on the top left except for things like T or the C but we're gonna go ahead and finish this up and then we will have essentially a large kind of word card here that we can use uh, in the future to maybe do a little visual discrimination skill or we can continue practice um, copying our words so we can have this as a visual cue and we can use things like this super great paper right here um, this was developed by an OT so we're gonna maybe use this paper to practice writing our words right here um, in our, our little space really it's up to you to decide what you want to do with your student here after you've completed this tracing of the shapes and cutting out of the shapes and gluing on the shapes to the paper. Um, so that's, that's really up to your discretion. And we really want to match the activity to your child's skill level. So if your child is not independent with cutting, make sure that we give them proper support um, proper cues to encourage success. We don't want to see them um, fail independently 50 times. I'd much rather see your student with hand over hand assistance complete an activity and be successful with it um, than to learn how to be unsuccessful 50 different times. So be, be mindful of that. We always want to make the challenge just the right challenge for your student here. So if, if you're exclusively working on tracing of shapes, let's just work on that and really focus on that part and then the adult can really do the cutting. Um, if, if your objective is to copy letters, then we would maybe write the letters out here or write the word out here and then copy them onto our, our other paper. If you have a goal for tracing, we definitely want to make sure that we continue our tracing trend uh, with these dots, the dotted uh, cues here on the uh, bottom of the paper to then spell out our word. Really, it's, it's just um, an easy worksheet that you can use in a couple different ways to develop all sorts of great visual motor integration skills, some good bilateral coordination, and really some strong visual perception skills. Now that I'm done with the truck worksheet, I can move along to some other worksheets here. I think the more complicated one is the train. So I think maybe I'll 
do this uh, rocket ship as my second worksheet. And the same principles apply. We have a trace and cut section of the worksheet that we're going to use uh, first to obviously trace and cut. And then we are going to match the shapes with the correct orientation to our um, object worksheet here. And with this one, there's an, an additional component to it because there are shapes that are essentially stacked on top of each other. So we are really going to have to use some strong visual perception skills, um, some really strong spatial orientation skills, and also our sequencing ability to know that f we have to put down this red rectangle first before we can put the yellow square on. So we're going to make sure that we put the yellow square on top. So these are getting a little bit more complex, but that's okay. And again, we really want to make sure that we are facilitating success with your student. So if they're, if they're demonstrating maybe some challenges with this portion of the activity, make sure that we offer them the visual cues to make them successful. So I'm ready to start with this worksheet, and I will go ahead and use my visual cues again as I begin. And then I can... I can maybe just do um, just a couple of these shapes with some visual cues. And then maybe the rest of them I will just kind of you know, point to or say, okay, we got to start at the top. Maybe we're starting to understand the concept of boundary a little bit more. Um, so this is the same exact sort of method here. We're just going to use our visual cue, tracing along our dotted line, stabilizing our paper with our non-dominant hand, working on some good fine motor skills here and some good visual motor integration. And then we are going to go ahead and cut the, um, cut the shapes out. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this worksheet. So I've traced out my shapes and I've cut out my shapes with just kind of a rough cut. So now I'm going to maybe cut these with a little bit more precision and this is something where we should be assisting your student if, if they need help so we don't cut ourselves we don't want to do that and we're just gonna go ahead and finish cutting out the rest of our shapes so that we can use them in the exact same way that we just did with our truck but this time we are going to use these shapes to make a rocket ship so now that I have my first shape done I put that over to the side and I can go ahead and finish the rest of these. So I'm done with my cutting portion and I'm ready to begin assembling my rocket ship here or matching the shapes. Really again we're working on our spatial orientation skills so we don't want to just set it there and say that we matched it correctly. We want to successfully orient the shape to our worksheet here and then we are going to get all of these correctly situated and once we do that we get to this portion where we're going to occlude a portion of our worksheet but we'll have to use our visual memory to really kind of finish this worksheet here so oh yeah I remember now I to put this yellow square on top of my red rectangle and once I've successfully matched these shapes and correctly oriented them um, in our little practice we can go ahead and finish this up with a glue stick and then we can move on to our third worksheet here so before I get to my third worksheet I'm gonna glue all these shapes onto my paper and then we're going to repeat the process with the train So I've finished tracing my shapes. I've cut them out and I've glued them onto the paper with the correct orientation in the correct sequence. And again, I can use this um, worksheet now to write out a word. I can copy my word onto my special bright lines paper. Or we can 
use this for object labeling or um, even some visual discrimination skills with color identification. So these are all just different ways we can use this worksheet. Um, for the sake of today's exercise, I will leave this one blank and just put it off to the side so that I can move on to my next worksheet here that we're going to use in the exact same way. So for this one, maybe I'll be a little bit more aware of my bilateral coordination abilities. So for this, maybe after I cut out my shapes, I will put them on my non-dominant hand side. So I'm a right-handed person. Um, so I'm gonna put these shapes after I cut them out, I wanna put them on my left side. So I have to cross the midline of my body to retrieve the shape and maybe go back over to my, my worksheet, which I'll have on my dominant hand side. That's definitely one way to do it. Or the alternative is if your student is not reaching across their midline of their body, maybe they're using their non-dominant hand in that fashion where they pick up the shape on this side. Maybe they even transition it over into their dominant hand side and they place it there. So these are all different ways you can do that um, particular portion of the exercise. So for me, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this worksheet much like I did the other two and I will work on crossing the midline of my body. So I'm done cutting out my shapes. I'm done tracing my shapes. Now I'm ready to match my shapes. And again, I'm gonna be working on some bilateral coordination components of this activity. So I really wanna be working with my dominant hand reaching across the midline of my body to select whatever shape I'm going to pick. And then I'm going to start using my visual perception skills to then match my shape over to the worksheet. So again, we're working, this portion is almost going to be exclusively focused on the bilateral coordination component, reaching across the midline of my body, getting my piece. I'm developing some um, horizontal pursuits, visual pursuits. I'm also scanning my environment here once I get my piece. There's all kinds of other great skills that we are developing alongside of this, but for this portion, let's just be real mindful of what our dominant hand is doing and, and how it's you know maybe reaching across the midline of our body, or if we're using our non-dominant hand, then we would maybe reach across the midline of our body with our non-dominant hand, or even if you wanted to develop a little bilateral coordination, pick up the piece with your non-dominant hand, transfer it over to your dominant hand, that's okay too. But let's just be really aware of where we put our, our piece, uh, our pieces of um, paper here, our shapes, relative to our worksheet. So we're not, we're not gonna have it at the midline of our body with our shapes underneath. That's not gonna do very much for our, our bilateral coordination abilities. So if you've been using it vertically for this portion, let's go ahead and separate them out into kind of these horizontal pursuits so we can work on our bilateral coordination. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this worksheet. So I have successfully traced all of my shapes, I've cut them all out, and I've used my corresponding worksheet to develop some great spatial awareness, some great sequencing ability, uh, really just overall good visual perception skills um, with our orientation and um, construction of this, this object here, or these objects. And we're gonna use these then as just a tool um, for us to, to either write words, practice tracing letters, or making full sentences using your um, bright lines paper. Or you can just trace on here or copy on here, but you have this as a tool also um, for, for those who are out there working on spelling. These are basically just large sight word cards um, if you're 
you know, if you're working on your bilateral coordination, you have that ability to do that with just where you place your materials. Um, the same can be said. The same can be said for your visual motor skills. You can just place where you place your materials will dictate which visual motor skills you are focusing on. So we can work on our horizontal pursuits. If you have your shapes over here and your worksheet over on the other side, vertical pursuits. If we have our shapes down here and our worksheet up, worksheet up top, um, really these are just basic worksheets to use in a manner that's going to facilitate growth in an area that uh, you really want to work on with your child and with your student. So whatever their goal is, if it's a writing goal, we really want to, you know, make sure we get to the writing component of it. If they are working on tracing shapes or copying shapes or cutting out shapes, we really want to focus on that component of it. So we can grade this activity up and down so we can make it more difficult or a lot easier just depending on how we use it as the facilitator. So please be mindful of that and um, don't forget to take a break. Make sure you allow lots of lots of time to um, you know maybe go and get some extra proprioceptive input or maybe some of that energy out if you're if your student requires a little bit more break time, that's okay. Um, but let's really encourage success. Make sure that we are giving the appropriate cues and the appropriate assistance to, in fact, encourage the success. Because as I mentioned earlier, I'd rather see your student use the cues, you know, with, say, moderate assistance and be successful with that and learn how to, to complete the activity correctly I'd rather see that than a student who's independently incorrect a bunch of times. So let's make sure that we are facilitating success. We really want to encourage errorless learning when we can. And we want to make sure that we are providing just the right challenge for your student. So thanks for checking out my video. I really hope you found it useful. Please feel free to get in touch with me if you have any questions on how to implement these strategies with your student.